Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Endless Space 2 with Zebu Nation. We've got episode 6 now rolling along in our little let's play we got happening here. So let's go. We kind of had a bad time of it last episode. I forgot what I was doing. I forgot how this game worked, all that stuff. It's been like a week since I had last played, so we're going to try to uh, you know, move things along a little better. We we got a nice fleet here now. These Wardens. Now, I think if we wait one turn... No. What do we got? What's up next here? Yeah, we got our Cypher up next. So we wait one turn, we'll have a full fleet, and we can go knocking off all these challenges that we got. So we're going to end this turn. Chapter 1, Beachhead Ongoing. A small immigrant community is forming. Your heart swells seeing them go up. So we we finished this solo quest just by having those Horatio join our little empire. So we got 110 approval. We actually needed that pretty badly. Uh, not approval, but influence. Um, so maybe now we can start passing some laws. How are our laws looking? We are a militarist government. We do have the new colony rule is still in effect. Let's see if we can now... All right, we got two lower fleet costs. Oh, man, that might be a good rule. You know, we now have the influence, I think, to pass the Mineral Act. But it's plus 15 per strategic deposit. Better than minus 20 ship cost. I think it is because that, that can be used for other things other than just ships. So we'll try to pass the Mineral Act, and hopefully that'll get passed. So our cipher has been built. Up next is the embassy. Yeah, we want to build that embassy real bad. So let's see. The cipher is our defensive ship. So we definitely need to add that to our fleet. So there we go. We got a nice little fleet here. Four of four possible ships. But we're able to add a fifth because it's our commander. So our command ship you know, gives us a little extra firepower in this fleet. And now we can send this fleet over here, and we can take care of these lunkheads. It's going to take us a little while to get there. we got some slow ships for some reason. We have to put some new engines on these ships. We also got some new modules, so we can upgrade our ships. Uh, let's see what happens when we auto-upgrade the Banshee. So it's added... Wow, look at all that fire parts. Added the basic sync laser. I think. Hmm. All right, let's take a first let's take a look at uh not the hunter. Uh we should probably delete the hunter class. That was not a good experiment. Um, alright, let's take a look at the Geist first, before we edit it. Oh. Oh, this is our colony ship. Ah, <sighs> Cypher. Basic Opal Laser, okay. Basic Plasma Shielding. Okay, so what happens when we auto-upgrade to the Cypher 4? Basic Sync Laser, okay. So we did add that, and we got the Uniform Shielding, okay. So we haven't got our new plating yet, that's what was confusing me. We do have some new modules available. Salvager, the Plasma Intensifier, Debris Analyzer, Delivery gear. Maybe that's a better option than this destructive salvager. You know, give us more manpower. I think is a better idea, especially if we've got to go invade that pirate base. So we'll apply that to the design. Oh, okay. Um, I guess that's it. We'll end the turn. Let's keep going. So, what are we planning on doing here? We need our new colony ship to go to Gaikon. We could probably also colonize Colombia now. I mean, might as well colonize it. 
Although Edisir is about to overtake it. And I think once Edisir overtakes it, we can just colonize there. Uh, I may be confused about that, but I think we can without a colony ship. Move our ships. We got one more turn before we can do that. Oh boy, pirates. The pirates are heading this way. Bad timing, bad timing. Um... What do these cost here? 256 production, 337. Banshee and a Cypher. We can buy the Banshee for 1.3k in cold hard cash. We can buy this Geist for 1.5. I think we shall buy out the Banshee, so Banshee will be ready next turn. And then we'll have a little bit more of a defense force waiting for those pirates when they arrive. Alright, we finished Focus Plasma, so now we got better defensive modules. And we're up next is Adaptive Bureaucracies. We can build the Danark University, that's very helpful, and the planet colonization of Atoll. So, like, island, basically, planets. That's fine. Pirates are almost there. Oh, our hero leveled up. That's good. See what sort of skills we can give him. When did he get these skills? Castaway, farming... Papers, please. We'll improve that. Again, the Cosmic Castaway. Give him plus 8 experience per fleet. Plus 2 vision range on fleet. So that'll help him be a better explorer and all that stuff. Alright, let's get out of here. E. E has been promoted and leveled up. So we build a Banshee on Edisir now. So our fleets are improving. There we go. Military Stage 3 unlocked, no G camps, and improved ship design. Starting experience level for new ships is Rookie 2. Good, so we'll have even better ships when we build them. Here we go, let's move our fleets around. Alright, the battle at Columbia. I, don't, I didn't want to bring this Horatio with us, but I guess we will. So we got our op ships, two Banshees, a Shadow, and a Horatio. Not what I wanted. Let's go to the advanced tactics here. We're only going up, ag up against two ships. Accelerator is best at short range. So is the Prowler. So how are we looking here at long range? 57% not good. 88% that's good. 88% is good. 50% not good. Better at medium. Better at medium. I think we should have the range on this guy if we just stay at long range. Should be good. Alright. Let us fight. They're going hard target. So they're going medium range. So we should end up in the medium range with a lot of which is where a lot of our ships are best at. So here we go. Battle at Columbia versus Pirates. Here they come warping into our sector. They've, uh, I think made a huge mistake. We got new warships. You know, they're expecting us to just have a bunch of scout ships. But now here we are. We, we've even added a Horatio to our fleet. Let's take a look at the overview. So yeah, we're going to start at long range and then move into mid range and then go back to long range. So we should have the advantage against these guys. Looking at it from the pirate's point of view here. They're getting pummeled at long range. They're not able to use their short range guns just yet. Lasers bouncing off their shields. Their prowler is just about destroyed. Taking a lot of damage, and there he goes. 
Laser weapons have taken their toll on the Prowler. Now, how's their accelerator doing? Accelerator's down to 300 hit points. Are we in danger of losing anybody? No. There we go. We now have the most powerful fleet in the constellation. So there we go. Decisive victory. Okay, the dust settles and your ships limp smoking out of the atmosphere. During the battle, you caught a glimpse of one of the attacking ships, a ship made of a bright blue crystal hidden beneath a layer of rock. Your thoughts flit to the first thing that comes to mind, an ancient race called the Harmony, who were supposedly wiped out centuries ago by a plague created by the Endless. But your historical knowledge is lacking. You make a mental note to read up more when you have the time. On your ship's bridge, your geologist and you share a look of relief. The majority of the crew has survived the day. Perhaps for the moment, that is the most important thing. So we gained 50 titanium. Okay, that's good. So we now have a ship on Edisir. We can bring that up. Um, the pirates are almost there. We're going to... the Horatio form its own fleet. Shadow is an exploration ship. We're going to let the Shadow form its own fleet. And we're going to take... What is this? There's something blinking at me? Is there something I need to scan? Oh, yes, there is. Life form curiosity. It's blinking at me. This must be a quest. Exploration successful. Tikanen population. Interesting. Although recently civilized, the Tikanen still retain much of their wild, aggressive nature and are constantly preparing for war. Man, we keep getting the weirdest aliens in our civilization here. I mean, I guess we got the Horatio. They're not. I mean, they are weird. They're clones of one guy. So there's just so many weird people here, but these are like more monstrous kind of populations. So it's, uh, I guess it's cool that we don't really know much about. We think that this is normal. We think this is what aliens look like. They look like weird multi-armed monsters, but that's cool. All right, so they get plus five. Uh, what is that, manpower? I think that's military manpower on fertile. And they are definitely militarists, so they're going to fit right in with our new government. We've also got a bunch of atmospheric quests here we can figure out. And Columbia. Expedition successful. You have your analysis of the atmospheric. Ooh, oral waves. Aurora waves. So this gives us minus two science and plus one happiness. I don't think that's too good. And plus 50 influence. We're going to need that. Oh, this was one of our quests, though. I didn't realize that. All right. Entering the lab complex, your expedition leader reports some grisly findings. Fluid trails, desiccated bodies, wholesale slaughter. The advanced state of de decomposition of the victim suggests that it happened long ago. Only the sealed environment preventing complete deterioration. Whatever or whoever did this is long gone. You instruct your team to recover the dead and return them to Bagaba. Alright. Is that all we had to do? Plus 30, obtain... Yeah, we did obtain them. Who's this? Oh, we got a new fleet. Wow. Shuttles. Wow, we've just become incredibly powerful militarily. We just got four new ships. The Trappists have their own fleet. They're cool-looking ships, too. They're, I mean, they're not that powerful. 78 attack, 118 defense, though. is nothing to sneeze. Look at this guy. 187 attack, 184 defense. 187, 184. They got a station, a medium ship. 946 attack, 
503 defense. We have just became become a powerhouse. I'm gonna send those boys over there to take out them dang old pirates. How about that? How you like them apples? You help me out, I help you out. What's this? We got a we got a small ship of sending some of the uh, that new population we got to Edisir. Okay, that's fine, I guess. Wow, this is a crazy turn of events. Uh, let's see. Shadow, we got some more things we can... I mean, let's keep on experimenting here. Some ruins. Expedition successful. We got the Kessler Syndrome an anomaly. This is no good. It's a detrimental anomaly. This planet's anomaly has a detrimental effect. Okay, it may later be reduced. An odd remnant of a past lost civilization. The upper atmosphere of this, of this planet is full of drifting debris. There's a cost to removing these remnants and space-based experiments as well as satellites must either be expensively protected or often replaced. So minus one dust, minus one production, minus two science on this system. We did get 20 Hyperium as loot. That's no good. Let's finish off this final anomaly. Columbia. New life form, the Harishim's population. Simple and agricultural, the pacifist Harishims are relatively introverted traders and farmers. Getting so much new population. We're meeting so many new aliens. What's going on here? Alright, so. The Lost Horatio, we're going to send them to Edisir. You know, we're just going to split up our fleets here. We're going to send our main fleet back to Zinnius. Alright. Is that what we did? Yes, that's what we did. Okay. 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 So we got one turn left until these guys get here. Faction assimilated. Nice. So let's see what what are they building over here nothing all right so we need to do sort of the rounds on these guys drone networks what do their planets look like it's a pretty good planet they got lots of room here lots of colonizable planets as well all right so we will add the cerebral big Data shipyards. Interplanetary network. We're going to add the... Uh, we're going to add one of our own population here. So that we can, you know, get a little foothold. Then we will colonize... Coral reefs gives us plus two happiness plus two food. There's an atmospheric anomaly there. Sterile hot desert. E e e e e. Um, we'll colonize Trappist One, I guess. It's got the best uh, production. So once we colonize that world, we can move all of our, you know, our population over there and let them stay on this nice, happy, happy world. All right. All right, all right. That was a much more productive turn. I mean, we just tripled the size of our fleet, and I don't know how many levels of firepower we just added, but it was a lot. All right, let's end that turn. We should be able to crush the pirates with that fleet now, without a doubt. Let's move our fleets around. Luxury resource, your empire now has access to Giga Lattice. You can use it to upgrade your system. Uh, this resource is found in the form of liquid metal lattices that are created under the Giga Pascals of pressure. Huh. Of gas planets. Okay, let's read the full sentence. 
They are created under the gigapascals of pressure of gas planets, its rarity and value being prestige and power to the nation that controls it, plus 50 influence on systems. Wow. I've never seen that luxury before. That's pretty good. And super spuds, the good old super spuds. Your empire now has super spuds, plus 10% ship buyout reduction on systems, and plus 10% construction buyout reduction. Huh. Interesting. Super spuds. Alright. Market speculators are buying Jadonics. We don't need that. Let's take a look. We can look at the market now, right? Yeah, we got system development. Um... I'd love to use deciduous trees, but we're not actually producing any. Blue cap mold will help us produce science. That's our most abundant resource is blue cap mold. I mean, we're not really producing a lot of other elements here. We're producing plus two blue cap molds a turn. Zero deciduous dust per turn. So basically, unless we find a source of deciduous trees, we'd be able to upgrade two colonies to level two, and that's it. But it would add plus four dust per person. This adds plus four science. I guess, I guess we'll go with the blue cap mold because that's the one that we can use right now, and then maybe if we get deciduous trees, we can use that for the next level of modernization. So there we go. Uh, we did not actually look at the marketplace. Here we go. So we got luxuries to sell. Ships. Well, we can't buy ships yet. We can't buy heroes yet. So right now all we got are strategic and luxuries. I mean, so we could like sell the Eden. No, we don't want to sell that. We don't really want to sell much of anything. We could sell... Titanium and Hyperium. Which we don't necessarily need right now. But honestly, we don't... Oh, we're making minus one dust per turn. So we need to improve our dust production. Um, we'll look at that. Momentarily. We still have something blinking in Columbia. I don't know why that's blinking in Colombia. Take a look at our quests. Oh, we need to uh, colonize Colombia too. That's what it is. What's what's their science production here? Not good at all. So we don't need that. We need to colonize Gaikon for the science, and we need to colonize Colombia because they think it's hosts. They think it's the. Um, and they think it's the planet we've already found over here in Edisir. They think it's Kiros, but we've already found Kiros. So it makes uh, little to no sense. Anyway. Anyway, let's get out of here. Get out of here. Get out of here. Alright, alright. I'm just babbling now. Uh, we got two prowlers sitting here messing with us. says we got two ships here oh we got a, we got our banshee okay so let's merge these together and then let's fight these pirates and get them out of here so they got a prowler 41 and 67 that's no good 80 and 123 for the other prowler meanwhile our ships 189 and 117 37 and 150 so we should be able to beat them pretty good Hard target is what they like to use, so that's medium range. They like to fight in medium range. Maybe not so much short range, so I think we're pretty good at short range. No. No, we're medium range also. So we'll go power to shields, and we'll fight them at medium range. All right, let's go. Another battle at Zinnius. Our home system. We're going to warp in on these pirates who have invaded our system. We have our new defensive ship and new attacking ship. Let's see how they fare. So theoretically, these guys should be 
Focusing their fire on our defensive ship. Let's check out the free, or let's check out the overview camera. So right now we're at long range, sort of splitting our attacks. Yeah, they are both focusing fire on our defensive ship. The Protector, Cypher 3. He's got a lot of hit points, man. He's taking 500 points of damage, but he's still got 3,000 left. Not a lot of crew, only... 15? Is that what that meant? 15 crew? Out of 100? That seems not good. Let's see, the uh, first Prowler is just about dead. Only has 54 hit points left. There it goes. Oh, right in time to see it blow up. There we go, boys. Alright, this guy's still got his shields, but he's taking a lot of medium range damage now. He's firing at our protector, which leaves our attacker free to fire off his missiles. Missiles are a little ineffective at medium range. They're more effective at long range, but there he goes. Get out of here. Decisive victory. So our new warships are paying off. Without a doubt. These pirates can't handle us. Alright, looking good. Looking good. Let's end the turn. Just complete Adeptive Bureaucracies. Denark University... So we can educate our people, gives plus 10 happiness, plus 5 influence, and plus 2 on everything else on the planet. Costs a lot of production, but it's worth it. 3,000 production. And now we can colonize atolls. Titanium probe, so we can uh, you know, start probing more, more sophisticated anomalies out there. We also have Hyperium probes, same thing. And we can also colonize steps planets now. That's good. And we get a hero to recruit. We can recruit Pi, a pacifist overseer. That's pretty hilarious. We can recruit Epsilon, a militarist guardian, the flagship, or Fuchsia Keencrest. What race is he? Scavengers. Adaptable, clever, and pragmatic. Interesting. I kind of want to go for Epsilon. Um, Pi is an overseer. I mean, if we go for Epsilon... That'll take, us, that'll take us even further down the militarist path. Um, that is... I mean, I do like those flagships. They are pretty powerful. They got a lot of guns on them. Yeah, I mean, let's go militarist. Why the heck not? All right, so hero management. Look at him. He's got a gun and everything. This guy, he's ready to fight. Let's assign some skills. All right, what do we got? Mechanical genius, dust, cosmic castaway, guardian specific skills. Okay. Plus 10% fleet health. That's what we're going with. Okay, okay, and the other thing we want to do was assign him to a fleet. I want to assign him to I wanted to assign him up here to the inquiring Bagaba. Yeah, we can't do that. The Dark Wardens, I guess.
Okay, so he's down here with these guys who were just successful. I guess I can't I can't uh, send them there while they're halfway in between warp. But now we oh we got another pirate fleet coming, so he's about to get the first action of his career. That's good. Let's move our fleets along. Of course, those guys are boys are going to be for a rude introduction. We're going to have two fleets in that system. Drone networks. All right. Let's see. We'll send these guys up here to Trappist. There's another thing we can explore up in Trappist. Meanwhile, over here we got two fleets. There's a Banshee. It's kind of sitting there doing nothing at the moment. Let's explore some more anomalies. We got three anomalies on Edisir 1 we have yet to explore. Subterranean. Battle tactic, team spirit, improves the effect of morale, which increases your damage when enemy has fewer active flotillas. Okay. Go after number two. Improved high plating one, a new module. 35 projectile defense plus 204 health bonus. Cool. Can we do a third? Yeah, we got three probes. Look out. There we go. Plus 50 influence as loot. So there we go. We've cleaned out all the anomalies on that system. So that's good. All right. So we're going to end this turn. We're going to probably do this one last pirate battle. And then we'll call it an episode. Uh-oh. A million things I haven't done. Conflict has broken out between two of your trusted advisors, two war heroes, once dearest friends, have nearly come to blows over the management of the industrial party. They trade insults in the press and don't print retractions. One, a young upstart, has made enemies and allies with his divisive decision-making, argues the party should adapt more taxes and tariffs in order to regulate the Empire's debts. See, this kind of stuff doesn't really make a lot of sense for the Riftborn, but, you know, we're going with it. The other, a fine negotiator but dedicated opportunist, cautions against bold action and worries about the government's relationship with large business. Their argument is as much personal as it is professional. Whichever visor you back will have plenty ammo to throw at the other as their rivalry continues. So, back the upstart. 20% of food is converted into dust. Greatly increases the industrialist party. That sounds like what we're going to do. Or back the opportunist. Plus 15% star system trade value. Um, we don't really have any sort of trade value, trade system going on right now. So we're going to back the upstarts. We don't need the food because we don't use it. So, hello upstart. We're going to back that. All right, let's move our fleets around. All right, we've built our Geist on Edisir. Yet another one. Banshee, Horatio, Geist. All right, Colonizer World. I mean, I guess we have to colonize Columbia 2 for that quest, so we might as well do it. We should have another colonizer coming on Zinnius, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's a while. It's going to be a while, though. Eight turns. That's fine. All right, so the pirates will be here next turn. Let me make sure that we're all... Uh, Defending, yeah, okay. So we're defending the system. So we built the guys. We built a machine. All right, so we got more population here. That's good. There they are, the Riftborn. Riftborn, Riftborn, Riftborn. 
Should probably add some more population here, honestly. So we've got three. I mean, or we could just send the Horatio out here. Once we get the... Yeah, we'll probably do that. Let's get out of here. Let's get out of here. Alright, we're rambling now. Let's go. Get out of here. End the turn. So we do this one battle, and then we'll take out the pirates and all that stuff. Machine bacteria. So that that gives us our new probes and allows us to colonize the steps. Next up, we got eukaryotic sap. Eukaryotic sap? I don't know. Anyway, this will add to aesthetic acceptance program, which adds a lot of happiness. H-Field Accelerator Module, which is a support module for ships. Gives you fleet movement points. Alright, so that, that'll allow your whole fleet to move faster, which is good. And we can now colonize tundras. Alright. see, what have we built? Cerebral Reality on Trappist-1 and Big Data Shipyards up next. Oh, the Intergalactic Technology Center. That's another great one to build. Plus 10% science per system level. Minus 10% science cost on technologies. We now have a new Hyperium engine. Which adds ship evasion to your uh, ship. You know, you get a plus 5% chance to dodge shots, basically. And uh, plus 4 movement points, so that's good. And we can now uh, go after uncommon curiosities. So that's cool. Move our fleets around. Alright, and now we can fight these pirates. Let's go. There's three of them here. Three prowlers. What do we got here? 80, 123. So these guys have leveled up a little bit. This is their next level of ships. 194 and 142. Look out. So let's, we're going to merge our fleet together. So this is the biggest fleet we've ever had. Six ships, two flagships. A flagship and an op ship, actually. And I never did upgrade this guy's ship. Probably should have done that. But can't do that in the middle. Oh, no, what did I do? I hit end turn. Population, the Harishims on Edisir are leaving. Okay. And the pirates are gone. Okay, I guess I can upgrade that guy's ship now. Uh, let's see. Where are our heroes? Heroes. <sighs> sad. It makes me sad. All right. What happens if we hit auto design? It added another engine. Base. Come on, guy. Come on. Let's be a little creative here. All right. So guns. We got two missiles and two machine guns. Not really what I'm looking for. I think we'll replace those missiles with... Basic sync lasers. So the sync lasers do 28 damage, 5% critical hit. Plasma beams do 12 damage. So we're going to replace them with the lasers, do as much damage as we can. Alright, then for shielding, we've only got one, no, we got two defensive spots here. So we got our new improved plating, we can add that. Our basic uniform shielding, basic basic plasma shielding, 10 health, 270 shield, 20 health, 4, 5, 405 shields. Definitely improve the shielding. Okay. Okay, now modules, we got two module slots. Can add a new Hyperium engine and add a repair slot. There we go. So that is going to cost us what? One Admantium, one, one Titanium, one Hyperium. 993 
Or no, 290 upgrade. All right. Good man. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Move our fleets. We're almost up here to the pirate stronghold. We have reached Columbia. Let us plant the flag here in Columbia too. Weird two-eyed, four-eyed bird. There goes our colony ship in the background heading toward these trees. Our people are going to hate this planet. But you know what? You got to do what you got to do. Completed a new host. New host, they call it. Though none of the new colony's inhabitants have ever reported another sight of the ghostly ship, it is said host perished aboard her lost airship, mourning the death of her mate and waiting for the gods to come and transform Kiros back into the paradise it once was. Perhaps so many years after hosts and the fall of the Endless, the gods have finally come. So we can now build the Obelisk of Remembrance. Okay, we're building our outposts there. Not a great planet, I'll be very, very honest with you. It's actually a pretty terrible, terrible planet. For us, anyway. But, you know, we could make something out of Columbia 1 and make it another production planet. Although that has the Kessler Syndrome on it, so we don't really want to go there either. This is actually a terrible system. We should not have done that. But, you know what? We did it. Nothing you can do about it now. Alright. So, I guess we're going to end that episode right here it uh, another disappointing episode if i'm honest with you but uh you know you do what you can so we'll till next time we'll see you later bye bye